Have you ever wanted to do something incredibly fun and a bit over the top with your smart home system? Well, you're in luck because that's exactly what we're gonna dive into today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up an integration in Home Assistant that lets you automate your home based on your favorite sports team's performance. And it's not just about changing the lights to your team's colors. We're gonna make your home react to live game events, almost in real time. Whether your team scores, gets scored on, wins or loses, Home Assistant can trigger an automation to celebrate or commiserate right along with you. I've set this up with my Gobi lights, so every time my Kansas City Chiefs score, my house lights kick into celebration mode. And surprisingly, my neighbors haven't been too annoyed. In fact, even some of them have asked me how I've done this. So if that sounds like something you'd wanna try, then stick around as we jump into how to get this set up. Hey there neighbors, it's Ryan here from This Smart House. On this channel, we delve into the latest and greatest in smart home tech, and we don't just stop there. We also provide you with in-depth tutorials to elevate your smart home experience. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a deep dive into automating your home with Home Assistant, basing this on your favorite sports team's performance. Today, I'm gonna to be using my Gobi lights as a prime example. But remember, this isn't just about lights or any specific brand of light. You can apply this to any device or automation in Home Assistant. But before we roll up our sleeves and dive straight into the tutorial, let's quickly talk about what you need to get started. First off, you're gonna need the device or light you want to control integrated into Home Assistant. If you're planning to use Gobi lights like I am, then make sure you've checked out my previous video where I walk you through integrating Gobi lights with Home Assistant. Next, you'll need to have the Home Assistant Community Store installed. If that name doesn't sound familiar, no worries. I've got another video that will guide you through the installation process. Trust me, it's gonna open up a whole new world for your Home Assistant instance, allowing you to add new integrations and add-ons to the Loveless interface. In addition, you might wanna make sure you're on a modern version of Home Assistant. I don't think anything here is gonna require the latest and greatest version, but you probably should be on something about mid-year 2023. So with those items covered, we're all set. So let's jump into the first step. All right, so before we jump into the actual installation, let's take a look at what the key integration is for this whole project, and that's the Team Tracker integration. So Team Tracker is a third-party integration that allows you to bring sports scores in from all sorts of different leagues right into Home Assistant. So whether it's from professional leagues here in America, like the NBA, NHL, NFL, MLB, or MLS, or even college sports and or international events in soccer, golf, tennis, or others, this integration has you covered. The cool part is that it works with hundreds of teams across all these leagues. And even if it doesn't directly support it, there are some add-ons that you can use to bring in other sports scores. So all this is done through the ESPN API. So now that we've had a quick introduction to what this integration can do, let's see how to get it set up. So the first thing we have to do is jump over into hacks. This might look a little bit different than what you've got running right now. This is actually running the 2.0 beta. So if your ears looks different, don't worry. Then we're gonna clear this filter and then we'll go to the top here and search for team tracker. There's actually two listings here. One is the integration and the other one is a card which we'll also install. So click on the team tracker integration and click download and select the latest version. Like any other integration that's found in Hacks, we're gonna to need to reboot after we get it installed. So if you have more to install, do it now, then do one reboot. But if we go back to the main page, we'll see the Team Tracker card, which we can install now, or you can do it at any other time because cards don't require a reboot. But we'll go ahead and take care of it now. All right, now that we've got it installed, let's go ahead and reboot Home Assistant. Okay, now that we've rebooted, let's go ahead and get the integration set up. So click Settings, Devices and Services, and click Add Integration. Then we're gonna search for Team Tracker. We'll click on that. And then it's gonna go ahead and ask us specifically for what league we're gonna to wanna to select from. So again, you have all sorts of different options from the NCAA, UFC, PGA, all sorts of different ones that are built in directly. Or you can also go in and set up a custom one, which you might wanna take a look at the documentation if you wanna approach that one. So we're gonna do NFL. And then to get our team information, we need to head over to the ESPN webpage. And then we'll click on search. And we're going to type in the name of our team. So in my case, Kansas City Chiefs. Click on that. And then to find our code, it's just up here in the address bar. So in my case, it's just KC. So we'll paste that in. You might want to customize this name if you're going to have more than one integration set up. So we'll call this one KC Chiefs. We'll go ahead and leave the other two open. And we don't need to worry about the conference number because that is not applicable here. And click Submit. Once it gets set up, then you'll get a new integration right here on the screen. Then we're gonna click on it and we'll take a look at what information we have. So click on the entity and we'll see KC Chiefs. Not a lot of information in here. Right now, all we see is post. What this does is show you different codes for the status of the game. So if it's before a game, it'll say pre, or it'll say in during a game, or it'll say post when you're done. 
might be asking, that's not a lot of information. What are we going to be able to really do with that? Well, the secret is in the attributes. So if we click attributes, we'll see all the different information from our specific team and they're either their current game or their last game. So in this case, the Chiefs played the Green Bay Packers and unfortunately lost. For here, you can see all the information that's available on the ESPN website. So you can see the team, the opponent team, the event name, the date. You can see it's a countdown to the, when it's gonna kick off, where it's being played, the location, the TV network, any odds and over-unders for you betting folks. And then they've got the current record of the team, whether they're home or away. You even have a link to the logo, which is pretty cool because you could use that in an interface somewhere. Team colors here, which is great because this allows you to actually see what colors you have. You can actually use this programmatically if you have like WLED set up. And then you've also got the score, which is important during a game, which we'll see here in a minute, the win probability, and then who won. So it's a true false. In this case, they lost, so it's false. And then you have all the other information about the opponent as well. And then there's also information that comes out like during an actual live game, possessions, last play, all this stuff, which this stuff is really cool because you will actually see this information live during a game if you have the team tracker card enabled. Now, since I'm actually recording this on the Monday after that game, Monday Night Football is being played right now. So let's go ahead and get this set up. All right. And now I've gone ahead and set up a quick team tracker for the Jacksonville Jaguars who are actually playing tonight. And you can see it shows us in, which means they're currently in a game. So if we click the attributes here, we can see all the current information about the game. You can see the current play that's being played right now. They're on fourth and one at the Jacksonville 41. So again, you get this all this great information, including timeouts that happen live during the game. So you could react to all of these things. And I'll show you a couple of examples here in one second. But before we finish up with the integration install, let's pop over and actually show you the card, which is pretty cool. So here's just the main screen on my test environment. I'm gonna go to edit, edit dashboard and then create a new card, search for team tracker. Now, if you've installed a new card in Loveless and for some reason it's not showing up in your dashboard and you can't add it manually, then you probably need to add it to your resources. You can go to settings and dashboards, and then we have an option for resources. Now we can say add resource and paste in our URL. And then it's a JavaScript module, click create. And then now when we go back to here, we should be able to go to add card and custom team tracker card now shows up. So then we're gonna go to the team tracker card GitHub page. And they've got some great examples if you scroll down towards the bottom. I'm gonna be using example one here because it's kind of a good getting started card. We'll click copy and then head over into card configuration and paste that in. And when we hit save, we'll get this awesome card that shows a ton of information about the active game going on right now. Again, I added another integration so you can add as many of these as you want. But this one I added for the Jaguars just because I know they're playing tonight. So you can see it tells you basically every play that goes on the win probability, all the information about where it is and what the current down is. And of course, this is gonna look a little bit different for whichever sport you've got. If you look at their example page here, they've got information cards for hockey, for baseball, all sorts of things. So you can see it's pretty powerful the amount of information that actually shows up from this integration. Now that I've got that set up, let's go ahead and see some cool automations we can do with this. All right, so now that we have our team set up, we can look at how we can set up different automations to react to this information. So for our first automation example, let's take a look at what to do on game day. So how are you gonna know that a game is coming up? Well, for mine, I just grabbed all of the Chiefs events and stuck them in my Google Calendar and then added that Google Calendar to Home Assistant. I'll probably do a video on how to set up a Google Calendar in Home Assistant and then how to react to that stuff. It's actually pretty powerful, especially if you have holiday lights. I've got all of my holiday lights kind of scheduled through the end of the year and I don't even have to remember to turn them on, they just happen automatically. So for the first automation, we're gonna create a automation that will automatically turn on a set of lights a set number of hours before the game starts. So you can do this a few different ways. Um, I've got mine where it turns on automatically based on a calendar event at a specific time of day. Um, I'll probably make a video on that later on because it's the best way I think to manage if you have outdoor holiday lights. But for this one, we're gonna create an example that shows us how to actually activate lights a set number of hours before a game starts. So as I mentioned before, a very key bit of information that you get directly from the status of the integration is the state data, which is the main information you get when you actually create the integration. So this state has one of five states that it can exist in, pre, in, post, by, or not found. There's a great description on the team tracker GitHub 
But the ones that we really care about are gonna be the pre, the in, and the post. So if you wanted a set of lights to activate the second that the game started, then you could do a very quick and easy automation that says when the state becomes in, then kick off and start the lights. Now, if you wanted to do this a few hours before to get ready for the game, that's the example I'm gonna show right now. So there's one key bit of information in the attributes and that's called the date. That shows the date and time of the game. So to modify this, we're going to have to create a helper. So I'll go to settings, go to my devices and services, the helpers tab, and click create helper. Now we're gonna create a template, which this is a nice little addition that came out a few versions ago that lets you actually create a template inside of Home Assistant without having to go into the YAML. Pretty powerful. Click template and we're gonna create a template sensor. So we'll give it a name, call it pregame. And then for device class, we're gonna call this one timestamp. Now under the state template, I'm gonna put a long template in here. Don't worry, I've actually got this all in a blog post. So feel free to jump on that. There's a link down here below. And you can just copy paste it, but I'll show it here on screen. So we're gonna create a template. And if you see on the inside here, we've got a state attribute, which is gonna pull out that specific attribute we're looking for from the sensor.teamTracker. Of course, change this to your entity's name. And then that attribute is called date. So this by itself would just show us the date stamp of the event in your local time. Then I'm converting it to a date time object so I can actually do math on it. And that's what this as date time does. So now you'll see this entire thing turns into a timestamp. If we go over here to the developer tools, I'll kind of show you what this does. So if I get rid of everything else from here, that you're gonna get a timestamp in Zulu or UTC time zone. So because it's got that Zulu on there, it knows exactly which time zone it's in. So you don't have to worry about which time zone you're actually in. A home Assistant will convert that automatically. But then in front of this, we're gonna add in as timestamp and then put that inside of, uh, put that inside of parentheses. What that does is that converts that into a Unix timestamp, which means we can more easily do math on it. And then behind that, we're going to, then behind that, we're gonna use a little time function called time delta. So this is after the whole conversation about Zulu. So that string is actually output in a timestamp here. Uh, I think it's an ISO format. And it's, you see the current time of the event when it starts in UTC or Zulu time, which at this time would be 115 UTC. Um, but, this is a result type of a string, which means we can't do any type of math on it. So to fix that, all we have to do is we can put at, in front of that we can put as date time, and then put parentheses around that, and that's gonna convert it into this style of date timestamp. Same exact time, it's just a different format. But now you can do math on this. So then we're gonna add a little function called time delta behind that. So we're gonna subtract that, so we're gonna go back that many hours, and so we're gonna use the time delta function, and then we have hours equals three and minutes equals zero. And of course, you can change this to days, whatever you wanna do here, but this will allow you to shift a time around. So in this case, we're gonna shift it back that many hours. So we're gonna shift it back three hours. So if I copy this and I paste it into my state template here, you'll see down here at the bottom in a preview, it says pregame five hours ago because the game started about two hours ago and that's three hours before then. So we click submit. So we'll always have this sensor that we can utilize in our various automations. So now we'll go into settings, automations, create automation. So we're gonna add our trigger here, and then we wanna actually select time. Then we're gonna select a value of a time date helper or timestamp sensor, click that. And then we're gonna drop this down and we're gonna select our pregame. So now whenever this time happens, it'll set this one off, it'll set this off. Then under actions, we can go down here and set up our lights to whatever function we want. So we can say light turn on, select a light, and we can give it whatever color, color name, brightness, all that good stuff. Now, if you remember the video last week, I showed you how to set up various presets using the Govee lights, which of course would apply to any other light brand that has a good Google Assistant integration. So you can take that knowledge you learned from there and use it here as well. So in that case, what I would wanna do is, instead of using the light turn on, we're gonna be using that Google Assistant integration. So we would actually just select the Google Assistant, the Google Assistant SDK, and run our command just like we did last week. Then whenever the pregame sensor kicks on, it would then activate that particular light preset. Now that we know how to set up a light at a particular point in time ahead of a game, let's see what we can do to re actually react to scores live during a game. So now in this example, let's look at how to set up something where when your team scores, then your lights will react or you can set up any other automation from there. So if we look at the state attributes we have available, the key information here 
is the team score. It's pretty easy to set up an automation whenever this score increases while a game is happening, then you could have it where it will set the lights. So if we switch over to my live environment, I've actually already got this set up. So this will actually react anytime the score increases. So in American football, if you get a extra point, that would increase. So you actually will have this happen twice during a touchdown, typically when the initial touchdown happens, and then it'll kick off again whenever the ball is kicked for an extra point or they run it in for a two point conversion. You could go in here and add filtering if you really wanted to keep that from happening, where when this, you'd actually have it where the Chiefs team score would only move up by two or three, but I don't really care. I don't mind if it goes off twice. So under the triggers, so for this automation, if we drop this down, whenever my team tracker entity, which is what this is, the attribute changes, which is team score, which again, you can just select it from the drop down here. So that team score, so again, if you wanted to see what the opponent was doing, it changes the opponent score. So anytime the score changes, which in football can only go up, this will get kicked off. Now under conditions, I have set it to where it's in state in, which means we're in the middle of a game. I don't think there'd be a chance the team score would change outside of that, but I don't want it triggering if say the score gets reset after the game is over and they move on to the next game. This will react to any score change, but in my case, I only care if it really goes up. So I have it call service where it'll actually send my, will actually send my phone a notification. So it'll actually send me a text that says the Chiefs now have, and then it shows the new score. So every time this goes up, I get a text, and then I'm using this template in here, the team score. Every time the team score goes up, I'll get a notification with the latest team score appearing right on my phone, which is pretty cool. And then under call a service, I'm using that Google Assistant SDK, and then I've created a template in my Govi for activate chief score. And it's just basically a simple DIY where all of my outside lights will change color, and then it delays for a minute and then goes back to the original setting. So in my case, I've got one called Chiefs Game Day. So if I'm in the middle of a Chiefs game, that's typically gonna be on during the day, and then so basically after a minute of it doing the celebratory lights, it'll automatically change back to the normal game day, which is pretty cool. And I've actually set up in here where these lights react as well. So I can actually run these and, and you'll notice the lights in here have changed too. So when this goes off, it runs a preset, which I've already defined, and my hexa lights will change into a pattern with some Chiefs colors. The lights behind me change to that. So this is kind of cool. This does this every time the Chiefs score which is great, except for if you happen to be watching on DVR or not watching the game, then it kind of gives away the score. But it's still pretty fun. Again, this is just a, an integration you can do with it. You can set this up to turn something on, turn something off, send a message to a friend, whatever your mind can come up with, we can have it react automatically to that. So you can see with this, and I know those are just a couple of quick examples. I'm sure with your particular sport, you might want to set it to do a variety of things. Obviously, if you're watching basketball, having a automation that reacts every time your team scores will get kind of annoying, but you could easily set up an automation where when your team wins, a particular light show happens, or your team loses, a particular light show happens. And that'd be pretty easy. All you would need to do would be to react when the state changes to post, meaning the game is over, the team winner. So if this team winner is set to true, then your team is won. If it's set to false, that means your team loses. So you could easily set up one automation to automatically react when it says, goes to post and it's the, it's true. You set up a, a celebration lights all throughout your home. And if your team is in post and it goes to false, then you can have your lights all switch back to normal and just act like nothing happened or change to a sad blue color. So as you can see here, there's a ton of flexibility. I just scratched the surface. So and if you come up with a cool idea, let me know down in the comments and I'm more than happy to show it off or help you out if you run into trouble. All right, so that wraps up our journey into making your home react to live sports scores with Home Assistant. We've covered how to use the Team Tracker integration, its installation, and setup process. Now your home can celebrate every thrilling moment of the game right alongside you. Now, if any of the lights that I showcased today caught your eye, don't forget to check out the links in the description. I've got links to all the gear I talked about and any videos that I've done on them. And remember, this is just the start. There's a whole world of possibilities with Home Assistant. I really can't wait to see how you personalize your smart home experience, and please let me know what you've done down in the comments below. Now, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more great smart home tips and tricks. Now, if you have any questions or wanna share your cool setup, please drop them in the comments below or join our Discord server. I really would love to hear from you. 
Until next time, keep making your home smarter.